Hey everyone, Joe here. Today's uh, retouching tutorial is going to be geared towards Mac users. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use Time Lapse Assembler from Day of the New Dan to create your very own time lapse. So let's get over here to the computer and let's get started. Okay everyone, let's first get started. Let's open our browser and let's go to www.day of I'm back if I'm, uh, the new dan.com and this is the website where we can get time lapse assembler from okay let's click a few links at the top your know, home time lapse photography archive contact let's click on time lapse assembler okay time lapse assembler was created by dan bridges back in 2012 and it has a few you know, features and stuff for it. And it exports to MPEG, H.264, Photo JPEG, RAW. You can find so much information about this. Okay, the requirements are Mac OS X 10.6 or higher. So I'm sorry, Windows users. And also QuickTime 7.2.1, which you should have if you have Mac OS X 10.6. Okay, the latest version is time of, of time out December is 1.5.3. And you have the option to donate. If you use it once or twice just to try it out, I wouldn't bother donating unless you just really want to. Although if you do use it quite a lot, and especially if you use it for commercial use, I would consider, you know, donating. You know, $5 is for personal use, you know, $20 for commercial use. Okay. And a few more questions and uh, liability statements and stuff about it. You can read on through here. But this is where you want to get from. Click the download link here. You can download it and install it if you haven't already. I already have it downloaded, so let's close our browser out and go ahead and bring our folder uh, program up here. Okay, and here we go, we have Time Lapse Assembler. Okay, over here I have a folder of uh, JPEGs that I've already created and a, a test movie. Let's move that in the trash real quick. Okay, I have 400 files in here, and I named mine Rain Coming because some rain clouds are coming in. One through 400. Now, you don't necessarily get a name mine like I named them. Uh, most time in the camera, when you take photos, they're in uh, order anyway numerically. So you should be able to ex uh, take them right out of the camera if you already have recorded a JPEG in the camera and skip any kind of post processing. Now I post processed all mine in Adobe Lightroom and I'll pull up what I'm here to show you. I did mine to kind of give you more of an HDR look, but you know, each to their own, how they want to set it up and how they want to edit their files or if they even want to i have a tutorial next th uh next week we'll go in and show you how and, you know do a little a touch ups on your uh, time lapse uh, uh photos <laughs> get that out to show you the way i'd like to set mine up and a few uh, techniques that i use okay so that's another tutorial let's first go over time lapse assembler here for a top button is to choose our source directive we'll get back to that here in a little bit but as essentially will be this folder over here. Okay. Got your codex I mentioned before earlier. Get H.264, which is very common for web as well as your know, Mac. And uh, it has option for MP4, which I recommend uh, if you have compatibility issues with H.264. It also has photo JPEG, which I don't ever use. Uh, I don't know who uses it, but it's there in case somebody does. I'm sure it, somebody does use this. It's just not me. Now RAW, I have a little comment about RAW here. Uh, since we're combining JPEGs, a lot of data is already lost. So therefore, when you can uh, output the RAW, I really could not tell a difference between H.264 at max quality compared to RAW uh, exporting. To me, they look the same, except RAW had a much larger file size. So you want to you know, consider that if you need to use RAW, and then go ahead and use RAW, but from my uh, me personally, I am going to stick this to H.264, which works really good. Okay. Then we have our frame rates here. Now you can go from frame rates from 0 0.1 all the way up to 60. 24 frames per second is normally considered cinematic. 29.97 uh, is considered for television use. But for easy math, I am just going to use 30. And I can see I already have 30 in here from previously using this. Okay, now we go over dimensions. You have resize and scale proportionally, you can uncheck or uh, check it. Now, I wanna comment on this. If you 
files are already 1920 by 1080 what mine are and you uncheck resize for some reason or another it may be the way the program is written it will actually create a much smaller file so even though we're not going to be resizing uh <laughs> we still want our file to be 1920 by 1080 which i'm going to point out is a 16 board uh 16 by 9 ratio which is what's used in most uh you know widescreen tvs these days as well as most computer monitors and it's also to be the one i want to use which is also used in youtube okay i am going to click on scale proportionally just because you can type in 19 to uh 20 which is the width of the 1920 by 1080 uh file and it will automatically put it as 1080 but if you want to anyway man uh manually input it you can me i just leave it as that makes it easier okay now we're going to go over quality settings obviously max is going to give you the best quality uh, output it will also give you the largest file size low will give you the uh, lowest quality file but it'll give you the much smaller file size so if you're exporting say over to uh you know iphone or something of that nature you'll definitely use low you know it's not going to tell that much of a difference if it's really small Although, if you're going to be showing the file out uh, to many uh, fo uh, people or uploading and really want the best looking file, consider high or max. I'm going to leave mine on max and move on from there. Okay, let's go back up here and choose our directory. As you can see, I already have time lapse tutorial folder, which is this one here, already chosen. Okay, but it may uh, automatically start up on documents or desktop. Mine's on the desktop, so I'm just going to double click on that folder and you can see my files okay you don't have to click on any of the files well, just double click and open the folder you can then click open okay once you've done that you can see your source directory is up here on top listed in the dialog box go ahead and click encode once you did that you can now give it a name we're just going to type in tutorial okay and let's click save and it will automatically start encoding your file now i'm going to go ahead and point out a few things here while this is encoding right quick and that's going to have to do with uh, your frame rate and video length okay for example we have 400 files that we're encoding here if we divide that by 30 it's going to show us that we can get a 13.33 second or 13.3 seconds you know keeping rounded off here uh, duration or the time length of that file okay Let's say if we took those 400 and we decided we go more cinematic and did it at 24 frames per second, it will give us a 16.66. Okay. Now I want to point out I'd rather use uh, 30 frames per second when encoding stuff that's uh, well, a lot of things are moving, especially daylight, trees, people everywhere. Because when I go down to 24, it just seems like everything's a little more jerkier to me, a little more uh, skips around a lot. Although when I do a lot of time lapse for at nighttime, where you, everything's darker, you know, 24 seems to work quite nice. And also if I'm shooting inside a house, you can see like or maybe cats, dogs moving around, and then you know the most things stay pretty much still. 24 works fine for that, uh, that also. I just feel when more things are moving, like during the daylight, 30 seems to work the best and gives you the smoothest of you know video. Okay, I'm gonna let the video uh, here fast forward to the end. And we'll pick up at the end then when the encoding is left off and preview our video. Okay, great. Time lapse of summer just finished. That didn't take long at all. And our file is more than likely at the end here. Okay. And there's our tutorial.move that we just created. As you can see, it come out to 489 megabyte. Let's double click and click on that. Let me drag it over here into our screen here so we can view it better. And I'm going to click the play button and let you view it. Okay, and there we go. And I hope everyone enjoyed that. And um, hopefully you find Time Out Summer very easy to use. Now tune in this Thursday and I'm going to go over my techniques for taking uh, photo, uh, Time Out's uh, video, or Time Out's photos, didn't make videos, and show you my techniques that I use on this Thursday's Tips and Techniques uh, video. So I hope to see you there. Okay, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was found it useful and stuff. And you know, if you like it, hit the like button down the bottom. 
but this is the time when I ask you, if you haven't subscribed yet, please take the time to subscribe. It's free, it's for you, and lets you know when I release more videos. And until next time, everyone, as always, thank you for watching.